Hey guys, Gary Barnett here from Barney's. Welcome to this video, which forms part of our educational series. We had a really interesting question put to us today by one of our clients, and it sort of went along the lines of this. If we want to print a uh, booklet or a brochure or something like that on an uncoated stock, like a laser bond or an offset type of paper stock, and you give us a proof on a coated stock, how do we, so how do we understand this? How do we, you know, look at the colours in terms of the output on a, on, a, on a coated stock for a proof and manage the client's expectations for when we actually deliver the finished jobs, the job which is actually printed on a coated, on an uncoated stock. So I've got a few props here and a little bit of information which I'm going to take you through just to quickly kind of um, explain and, and break through some of the jargon if I can. So the situation that we have um, at the moment is, is very real. We are printing a job. Um, the client's brief to us was they wanted it printed on a laser bond, which is a, an uncoated stock. It doesn't have any coating on the surface. And the only way to proof a job like this really is, is, is th three ways. Firstly, it's a PDF proof, and that is um, just an electronic proof. But because a screen is made up of RGB or only red, green, blue colors, you can't really identify the true colors. So let's go to a physical proof. And a physical proof is, is printed using CMYK, or cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, the three primary colors in black, to produce a proof. But proofing paper is coated. It has a sort of a, sort of a clay coating surface to it. The ink sits on top of that. The, the third way you can produce a, a proof is to actually completely run the print job on the actual stock by setting up the presses and the inks and run it, running the complete job for the proof and then rerunning it a second time. But that's very expensive. So if a PDF proof isn't ideal and actually running the job twice isn't ideal and it's expensive, then the way that most people go is with a, um, a hard copy digital proof on coated stock. So now that that's explained, um, we have supplied um, the client with a coated proof and it looks vibrant and the colors look really good and all of that but just to set their expectations we've explained that the uh, the end colors will be a little duller on a uh, on the uncoated stock why is that I've got a few props here what I've got here is the Pantone color guides Pantone is a, an international global standard there is an uncoated guide for uncoated papers and a coated guide for coated papers and if we pan across here just for one example I've picked one specific Pantone color which is Pantone color 2592C stands for coated and across here 2592U for uncoated paper and you can see how the the purple looks different on the uncoated stock to how it looks on the coated stock it is exactly the same color except uncoated papers absorb the ink differently. It doesn't sit on the surface, it, it sort of absorbs into the fibres, whereas the coated stock, it sits on the surface. There's, there's other chemical um, explanations involved, but very simply put, that is the difference. So the same colour printed on different stocks actually looks different. If we pan out here and have a look at a, at a very real example, this example shows us very clearly following these colours, this particular booklet here, the purple, is exactly the same purple as that purple, but this purple is on an uncoated stock and that purple is on a coated stock. The richness of colour really comes through when printed on the coated stock, it really sits on the surface, whereas this one it really absorbs a little bit like blotting paper, it sort of bleeds and absorbs into the paper. So if you choose an uncoated stock it could be for environmental reasons, um, maybe uh, because of uh, a requirement to, to really present a, a natural earthy sort of look, uh, but we can still achieve those types of uh, outcomes because a lot of the paper stocks are very environmental today even though they are coated. But just to show you the difference in colour output, now if we just um, pan out a little bit here, I also just wanted to show you that we have um, paper swatches here from uh, one of our paper merchants and these are orange titled ones uh, are coated stocks when we open up they basically show 
uh, gloss stocks and satin stocks, which is very similar to this top copy here. And then I will also show you this green range here, sitting over here, which is the uncoated range. So there's lots of different paper choices, and these are bond offset type type stocks. So depending on the outcome you're looking for, um, we we will talk to you and 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 guide you and answer any questions you have on how paper stocks can affect the final outcome of colour. So that's my little story today on how different stocks can change the colour when using the same inks. So once again, thanks for tuning in to this little educational uh, informative video. If I can answer any questions, please get in touch with myself, Gary, or any of the very friendly and helpful team here at Barney's. And if you have any other topics you would like me to, to talk through, please just let me know, I'd be happy to. Bye for now, hope this was helpful.